welcome back to Pia Talks. And today we are talking about a show that I was totally late to the party for, which is Love is Blind. Okay, so everyone had been talking about it, my friends, my coworkers, you know, everyone wants to talk about this show and I thought, I haven't watched it, I don't know anything about it. I don't know the concept, I have no clue what the hell this show is. So I decided to binge watch all day yesterday. Okay, I have no life, but you don't need to know that. Anyway, so yesterday I watched the show and I instantly, instantly fell in love from the first episode. I thought, this is a great concept. You only fall in love through conversation, through personality. It has nothing to do with what you look like. It was a great idea. At first, when they were explaining how the process was gonna be, you know, from meeting you all the way to your wedding and everything was gonna take place in a 38 day period, I thought, what the heck? And then when I started thinking like, how are they gonna keep these people, you know, separated? How's it gonna be? They had a great idea of separation and they used these pods, which were like little tiny living rooms that separated by a wall. You could not see anything. You could hear, but you could not see. And it was brilliant. So let me just start out with my least favorites and work my way up to my absolute favorite. Okay, so my absolute least favorite was Mark and Jess Jessica. I thought that Mark was wonderful. I thought that he was kind and caring and understanding, but I thought he was way too patient and way too gullible. And I thought he was also way too forgiving. Jessica, at first, I liked her. You know, I liked her at first and I felt bad about the Barnett situation, but the way she treated Mark was just downright disgusting. Her behavior was terrible. And her only problem I think she had with Mark is that Mark did not have the physical attributes that say someone like Barnett had. And that's just bullshit. It's like if you come on this show and you claim that you are this grown ass 34 year old woman who is mature, you are about your life, and you have decided that love is the most important thing, why is his physical uh, shortcomings, according to you, a problem? The fact was the man was shorter than what she wanted. And she couldn't just have the balls to stand up and say, hey, um, I'm too shallow to be with you. Like I am too, you know, into appearances to be with you. Or just say I'm still into Barnett, which is also one of the reasons her top reasons were number one she was way too into barnett number two she did not like mark's physical appearance number three mark did not have his all his ducks in a row because let's not forget he's 24 and she's 34. you know she owned her own home she was making six figures he lived with roommates he was 24. he works as a, a fitness uh, trainer which I think that some fitness trainers make quite a bit of money. It just depends on where he is. Later in life, he could make more money than her. You never know. I just think that she didn't truly give him a full chance because she really wanted to be with Barnett. And later when she saw all the other couples and how cute they looked together and how happy they looked together, she was downright jealous. So they're my least favorite couple and it's not mostly because of him, even though I think that he gave her way too many damn chances. He put up with way too much. And then in the end, she leaves him at the altar. And it was sad because she had plenty of opportunity to tell him that it wasn't going to work out. And he also had the opportunity to walk away from her, which I wish that he would have. So th my next least favorite would have been Kelly and Kenny. Off the rip, they didn't belong. I mean, even when they were still in the pods, they didn't make sense. I don't know if it's just me, but I just didn't think they made sense at all. She clearly was not into him ever. She thought of him directly as a friend as soon as she seen him when, she, when they opened up the pod and she was able to see him. 
She clearly didn't like him. She gave him no play, nothing. A few kisses here, a few hugs there. He should have known that it was not going to work out and that she was just running game. And I'm sorry that he, you know, that he went through that. Personally, I thought Kenny was a really cool guy. And on the reunion, he mentioned that he has a new girlfriend and that he's extremely happy. So I'm happy for him. But for her, grow up girl, just go ahead and let him know that you are stuck in the friend zone. We are never moving forward. You could have done that. You're a grown woman. Next was that Gianna or Gianna and Damon. What? They are also another couple that I wasn't quite sure of in the pod. She is just different. I, out of the breakup between the two of them, 80% of it is her. I really thought the way she spoke to him, the way she overreacted all the time, the way she was hot and heavy, one minute she's real warm and sweet to him, the next minute she was cold as ice. And I, you know... It was like he was dealing with three different women. You never knew what you were going to get. And he would ask her in the most calm, rational way not to speak to him that way. And she would still continue to do it. She was dropping the F-bomb on him constantly, calling him an MF constantly, saying GD constantly. And he had had enough. Now, do I blame him for waiting till he got up there to tell her no? Absolutely. He had no right to do that. You had just wined and dined her a day beforehand. Helicopter ride, catered meal, sex that night. And then the day after at the wedding or one day after at the wedding, she's at the altar looking beautiful in her beautiful gown and you tell her you can't. No, you could have told her you can't 20 minutes earlier before she came down the aisle. Or you could have called her, I mean, at this point, send me a damn text. Don't wait till I get up there at the altar thinking that I'm about to marry you and I'm not. However, do I think it was the right decision? Hell yes. He should never have married her. She was not ready. And as a matter of fact, I don't even know if he was ready. They did the right thing by not getting married. Now, at the reunion show, they are back together. They are dating. I don't know. I, you know, personally, I think that unless she has gone to therapy, their relationship should not be together. She needs a little help. A lot of help. She is a beautiful girl, but when her emotions are in check, she is really lovely and she would make anybody a great wife. But when her emotions are all over the place, she is hell on wheels and nobody wants to be bothered with that. Nobody, nobody, mm -mm, nobody. So my next couple after that is Burnett and Amber. I gotta admit, at first I wasn't feeling Amber. Not at all. The girl was all over the place. She was all over the place. And I have to admit that I also was not feeling Burnett. After he had all three of those women thinking that they were the one, I said, damn it, boy, grow to hell up. I thought, fella, really? You were on here to find a wife and you are going back and forth with all these women like this. You are breaking hearts left and right. Pick a woman and move on. Now, do I, in my heart of hearts, think that he should have chose LC? I do. I think that LC would have been a wonderful wife for him. However, he picked Amber. And at first I thought, there is no way that they are going to work out. I didn't think that his family would appreciate her very much. She is loud, she is obnoxious, and she is annoying as hell. And I thought, you're coming into this relationship with what? Um, he has an education, he has a career, he has a home. You're coming into this in hella debt, student loans, no job, and a credit card for $700 credit limit that's just for makeup. And I thought, well, what the hell? What? So I thought to myself, like, is she just in it so that she can have somebody take care of her? Because she mentioned several times that she wanted to be a stay-at-home wife. 
And I was thinking, oh, wow. Then when they were getting through the preparations for the wedding, she wanted this expensive dress, this $850 alteration, and she was hanging out at the house drinking wine and planning the wedding, and he was at work. And I could tell by the look on his face, he's like, what the hell? So I didn't know. I, I didn't know if they were really in love or if they were just in lust because he thought, you know, she was the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. And she thought he was very handsome and, you know, a good guy. So I don't know. At the reunion, they said that they have had tough times because she wasn't really working and, you know, they didn't think they were going to make it, but they've worked things out. So I'm assuming that she's probably gotten a job and started, you know, trying to pull her weight in the relationship along with him. And it seems that they are doing much better, that their relationship actually is built on love and not just lust. So it looks like we were, you know, possibly, I say we, I me looks like I was you know possibly wrong about her um but my number one couple is definitely Cameron and Lauren oh my god they were so cute from the beginning and I am an emotional wreck from the beginning when they met in the pods I was an emotional mess I sat on the couch crying my eyes out I'm like oh my god especially the episode when they said they love each other for the first time I had real tears I had to get a Kleenex I said oh my god what it was amazing I said now wait a minute now it has been five days they are in love they are in getting engaged I mean they were real when they got in those pods and they started talking they did not fool around with the whole stupid questions. You know, what's your favorite color? Uh, I mean, they got down right to it. Their family lives, their backgrounds. It was a beautiful sight to see. And their relationship just stair-stepped to getting better and better and better. And my favorite episode with the two of them was the episode when he took her to that tree house. I am in love with those tree houses. I watched that show on TV about the beautiful tree houses and me and my mom watch it actually. And I'm always saying how gorgeous those are. So to see him take her to that beautiful tree house in the woods with all those windows, it was so romantic. And seeing how vulnerable they both were, they weren't afraid to show their emotions. They weren't afraid to cry. And to see him meet her dad and her mom for the first time, it was just, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. I mean, I absolutely thought that they are just a beautiful couple. And I've been seeing them on all kinds of media outlets and in, at the reunion, and they are just still happy, still progressing. And I think they're gonna make an amazing couple and have beautiful babies, you know, hopefully in the near future. And I, I was super excited about them. I just love this show. I love the concept and I feel like I should apply for the next season or something. But anyway, one thing that stood out to me that I thought was weird was that Jessica letting her dog drink out of her wine glass and then continue to use it. I thought, damn, you know, I am a mom, not a dog mom, but I'm a mom mom. And, you know, when my son was a baby, he would like to try to drink out of one of my cups and I would let him drink out of my cup, but then I would get a new cup because babies don't know how to control all that drool. And I'm like, even though he's my precious baby and I love him with my whole heart, I don't want to drink his, his drool. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I thought that was quite gross, actually. I don't, he licked all around the cup. Like, it, it, I'm sorry. Dogs cannot drink out of my cup and then I also <laughs> drink out of the cup. You know, her dog had a bowl. I mean, I don't even know if dogs are supposed to drink wine. Do dogs drink wine? I mean, put that in the comments. I, I don't think you're supposed to give your dog wine, but even if you were, put it in the bowl. What the fudge? Like, girl. And I absolutely cannot forget Carlton and Diamond. I don't even really know what to say. I mean, I think that Diamond was a lovely, lovely young lady. I think that Carlton was absolutely wrong for not telling her about his uh, sexuality from the jump. 
if I am on a dating show and I think that I'm about to propose to somebody, I think that that lady or that man deserves to know my sexuality, my past. And I don't think that Diamond was angry with him for her, for him. And I don't think that Diamond was angry at him for being bisexual. I don't think she was angry at him for that at all. I think she was angry at him for not telling her ahead of time. Had he told her on one of their earlier dates, she may have decided to stay with him. She may have also decided to move on and choose someone else. You just never know. I think that he missed the opportunity of giving her the chance to show him how much she cared about him by just telling her up front. I also realize that it has to be very scary to tell somebody something like that because you never know how people are gonna react. I do think that when he finally did tell her that he jumped the gun really fast before letting her explain why she was asking the questions she was asking for him to call her a bitch and say all the things that he said to her was absolutely ridiculous and it was so wrong and unfair and the comment he made about her wig although I have to agree, her wig was slipping a bit. I don't think it was right for him to do that. If he really cared about her, if he really loved her like he said he did at the beginning, when they got to Mexico, he could have said, hey, um, your wig's slipping a little bit. You know what I mean? And that would have been fine. Use that as an insult. You use that as a way to hurt her, and that was not appropriate. On the reunion show, they were both there, which it was really nice for them both to show up. And they both said that they had received death threats online. And I'm thinking, well, what the hell? I mean, some people online are just absolutely ridiculous. People online will say all kinds of things. They will do all kinds of things and cross all kinds of lines that they would not cross in everyday life. Nothing that happened on that show or any show calls for death threats. I mean, just awful. That I cannot condone. I do not condone death threats anywhere even though i was not a fan of him talking to her that way and i was not a fan of him waiting to the last minute to tell her about his sexuality and then there was the confrontation between amber and jessica you know throughout the series we saw it amber didn't see it until the show aired or until she watched it later but Jessica continued to try to get Barnett to leave Amber and to see if they could work things out between the two of them. She continued to hit on him while she was still engaged to Mark, which was some shady, shady shit, for real. So I did not blame Amber for letting Jessica have it, not at all. She was dead ass wrong, dead ass wrong, you know, and I could tell that she was embarrassed um, when she brought it up and she apologized. Do I think that Amber really accepted that apology? No, I do not. Do I think that if it was reversed, if I would truly accept her apology? No, I would not because I don't think it was sincere. I think that she was just embarrassed and knew that she needed to say sorry right away. Otherwise, you know, like Amber said, they're not gonna be friends anytime soon, if ever. And I think that they all need to just go on with their lives and try to do the best that they can. So anyway, that was my thoughts on Love is Blind. I am so into it, okay? And I cannot wait for season two, which I hope we'll be seeing soon. And until next time, bye. <laughs>